So thus far in the course we have mostly been focusing on the transformations that come out of matrices, the geometric point of view. And we're going to change topic slightly now and talk about simultaneous equations, which is maybe another point of view on matrices. So a system of simultaneous linear equations is something like this. Uh, x minus y equals minus 1, x plus y equals 3. So it's a collection of a finite number of equations in some number of variables, in this case two equations in two variables, and each term in the equation it only has like maybe an x or a y, or it could be like a 4x plus 3y, or a constant or you know minus x minus 2y or something you know each term is linear in x or y so there's no x squareds there's no e to the x's nothing like that okay so um, I want to focus on this example Ooh, where did y go? I want to focus on this example. Um, so this system of simultaneous equations is actually a matrix equation in disguise. We can write a single equation in terms of matrices and vectors which encapsulates this pair of equations. What is it? Well, if I write the left hand sides as 1, minus 1, 1, 1, x, y, and the right hand side as the vector minus 1, 3, then I claim this equality of vectors is the same, it's equivalent to this system of equations here. Let's see why that is. If I multiply out this uh, left hand side here, I get uh, the vector x minus y and the x plus y. And now for these two vectors to be the same means that their x component has to be the same, which tells us this first equation holds x minus y equals minus 1. And the second equation, our second component has to be the same, so x plus y has to be equal to 3. system of simultaneous linear equations can be rewritten in matrix form like this. And actually we're generally going to go one step further and abbreviate the matrix form by writing just what's called an augmented matrix. In other words you write the, uh, the matrix here and then we write a bar, a vertical bar, followed by the uh, vector of constants on the right hand side. So this is called the augmented matrix, it's really just a, a piece of notation, like a shorthand. It's a shorthand for this matrix equation. So if ever you see an augmented matrix, you should think what it's really saying is this matrix A times, you know, x, y, or whatever the vector is that you're, however many variables it is that you want to put here, equals uh, B, let's say, where B is this final column. Okay, we do this just so we don't have to write x and y everywhere because they're actually more or less irrelevant when it comes to solving the equation. So how might you solve a system of equations like this? Well, 
I'm going to go through a series of steps to solve this set of equations and keep track of what's happening to the augmented matrix in this column over on the right hand side. Right, so this is a system of simultaneous equations. It has an augmented matrix you can write down that represents it, which is 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 3, with a bar here. We can do things like add one equation to another equation or multiply an equation by a constant, that kind of thing. And that's going to have an effect on the augmented matrix. So let's see. Uh, if I want to eliminate x from the second equation, I could subtract equation 1 from equation 2. Right, if I subtract this from this, so I subtract x minus y equals minus 1 from x plus y equals 3, what do I get? Well, the first equation stays the same. I didn't do anything to it. The second equation, the x has an x subtracted from it, so that becomes just 0. The y has a minus y subtracted from it, so that becomes 2y. And the 3 has a minus 1 subtracted from it, so that becomes 4. And the corresponding augmented matrix is 1 minus 1 minus 1. The top row didn't change. And the second row has no coefficient in x, it's 0, a 2 in front of the y, and a 4 on the right hand side of the bar. And if you think about it, what did we do? In just if we f forget about the equations and just think about the matrices, what did we do to get from this first matrix to this second matrix? We subtracted row two, sorry, row one from row two. So in other words, row two was replaced by row two minus row one. So R subscript two is just shorthand for row two. And R subscript one is shorthand for row one. Okay? All right, so in other words, the one became one minus one, which is zero the 1 became 1 minus minus 1 which is 2 and the 3 became 3 minus minus 1 which is 4. Okay, what next? Um, well, the second equation looks good. 2y equals 4, that tells us y equals 2. Why is that? Well, we multiply equation 2 Try and write a bit neater. Multiply equation 2 by uh, a half. So again, equation 1 stays the same. Equation 2 becomes y equals 2. And in terms of augmented matrices, the top row stays the same. The second row becomes 0, 1, 2. Just what do we do? We divided row 2. 2 by 2. We multiplied um, row 2 by a half. So row 2 is replaced by a half row 2. Right, so when I write this notation, I don't think this is standard notation. This arrow with a bar on usually means something else. It means an element maps to something. But I'm going to use it to mean we replace row 2 by whatever's on the right hand side of this arrow. Okay. Um, continuing, we want to get rid of the y in the top of the equation to get x on its own. So we add the second equation to the first equation. So add equation 2 to equation 1. And then we get x minus y plus y. So x equals minus 1 plus 2. That's 1. And we also have the second equation, y equals 2. In terms of augmented matrices, that's now coefficient of x is 1, coefficient of y is 0, and the constant is 1. In the first equation, and for the second, it's 0, 1, 2.
as before. So what do we do here? Well, we now replaced row 1 by row 1 plus row 2. Right, so 1 became 1 plus 0, which is 1. This minus 1 became minus 1 plus 1, which is 0. And this minus 1 here became uh, minus 1 plus 2, which is 1. So this process of solving a system of simultaneous equations from the point of view of the matrix equation or the augmented matrix looks like just doing a sequence of row operations where row operation is something like this it's like replace row 2 by row 2 minus row 1 or replace row 2 by a half row 2 that kind of thing so row operations Are what we're going to talk about now. So I'm going to define a few different row operations that you can do which correspond to some manipulations of the equations. So um, I'm going to, this is not standard notation, this is just something I'm inventing for the sake of making it easier to talk about them. So type 1 row operations is where you're going to replace row i by row i plus a multiple of row j. Okay, so lambda here is a number, just a real number. Um, so in the previous example, this is a type 1 row operation. We're doing, so i is 2, we're replacing row 2 by row 2 minus row 1, so j is 1 and lambda, the coefficient, is a minus one. Down here, this row operation is also type one. Here, i is one. We're replacing row one with row one plus row two. So j is two. And lambda is one. Lambda is the coefficient of row two here. Okay, that's a type one row operation. And in terms of equations, it just you're just saying, okay, I'm gonna add or subtract some multiple of equation j to equation i. And you can always do that, and it gives you an equivalent system of equations. Type two row operations are things like what we did here. we rescaled row 2 by a factor. So in general, row i is going to be replaced by lambda row i for, again, some number lambda. So in this example, lambda was a half and i was 2. Okay, and that again, again, that just corresponds to multiplying um, one of the equations by some constant. We just got to be careful that we don't multiply an equation by zero, because if you have some interesting equation, you multiply the whole thing by zero, it ceases to be an interesting equation. It just becomes zero equals zero. So that will actually change your system of equations if you do that. So um, I'm going to say lambda is a real number, but it's not zero, which you can write like this. So this is the set of real numbers less the subset consisting of zero. There's one more kind of row operation I want which we didn't use and we won't talk too much about but it can be very useful. I'm going to call type 3. And this is just where you swap row i with row j which just corresponds to reordering your equations. So it can be very useful sometimes. Now, going back to our example, we said we'd solved the equation when we hit this point. So x equals 1, y equals 2. 
And what that corresponded to was that the augmented matrix was the identity matrix on the left hand side of the bar and then some whatever the answer was on, on the right hand side of the bar. So these are the kind of the values of x and y in this case. Right, because then if you if you got the identity here, that's exactly telling you x equals the first thing, y equals the second thing, and and so on if you have a bigger matrix. So the aim of these row operations is to put your augmented matrix in the following form. So the aim of using uh, row operations is to try to put the augmented matrix into the form where it just has the identity matrix on the left hand side of the bar and then a vector of constants on the right hand side. And if you get to this point, you can definitely say that you've solved your system of equations. However, it is not always possible to do this. So you might not be able to get the identity matrix here. So here's a silly example. Let's suppose we have two variables x and y and one equation x plus y equals 1. The augmented matrix is now, well it just has one row because there's only one equation. Coefficient of x is 1, coefficient of y is 1, the constant is 1, and no matter what you do, you cannot put this into the form where the thing on the left-hand side of the bar is the identity matrix, because the thing on the left-hand side of the bar is a 1 by 2 matrix, and the identity matrix is square. So this can never be, you know, the identity matrix. It's just the wrong size. So we need something more general than the identity matrix that we could put here um, and still class our equation as solved because actually we can definitely solve this equation right you know you could just say well x equals 1 minus y and that expresses x in terms of y any value of y will do and it gives you a value of x that is the solution so the the general solution to this would be uh, sort of 1 minus y, y equals xy. In other words, for any y, you get a, a corresponding x, 1 minus y. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to talk about what kind of matrices we want to get on the left hand side of the bar, and it's the so called matrices in echelon form or reduced echelon form.